50th birthday here at Anglia this week and we've news of another half century milestone today. The Queen has been in the region today paying a visit to the Animal Health Trust near Newmarket. Yes, Her Royal Highness was marking her 50th year as patron of the charity. Martin Stew was there too. As with any royal visit, there was nervous anticipation for the Queen's arrival at the Animal Health Trust. But it's not the first time she's visited the Newmarket charity where she's been a patron for 50 years. Our cameras were here to see her visit in 1981 when she opened a new centre researching viruses affecting horses and again in 1994 when she was joined by the Princess Royal. And the Queen's still a strong supporter of the Trust. At Christmas she made a personal donation to the work being done to help find a vaccine for stranglers, a highly contagious respiratory illness which can kill horses. She seemed very interested um, in, in the work we're doing on both dogs and horse genetics. She obviously has both dogs and horses herself and I think has had animals that have been affected with various inherited diseases in the past. So she seemed very interested in understanding the work we're doing. Over the years, the Trust has helped animals of all different shapes and sizes, including this one-legged chicken who had cancer and this dog who was given special goggles to help him see. Their research is now centred around mapping the DNA of dogs and horses to eradicate hereditary diseases, which are a serious threat to rare species like the Suffolk Punch. After her tour around the lab, the Queen made her way outside to plant a tree in memory of the man who started the trust, Walter Woodridge, and to meet the staff and their families before heading home. The work they do here at the Animal Health Trust is entirely reliant upon charitable donations. They'll be hoping that today's royal seal of approval will raise not just awareness, but funds for their life-saving research. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Newmarket. Earlier this week, there was an unusual accident near Milton Keynes. Several donkeys and a mule which had escaped from their field were hit by a car as they lay in the road. Well, the car driver was OK, but sadly the mule was badly injured and had to be put down. Well, it's emerged now that Napoleon, as he was called, wasn't just any mule. He'd appeared in films alongside the likes of Keira Knightley and Richard Gere. Hannah Pettifer has been to his stables at Mersley in Buckinghamshire to find out more. The film industry is mourning the loss of one of its stars. As part of the Devil's Horseman stunt team, Napoleon the Mule spent the past 25 years working alongside some of Britain's finest actors. He'd starred with Keira Knightley in The Duchess and Colin Firth in Dorian Gray. He even had his own comedy act. But early on Tuesday morning, Napoleon escaped from his field with three donkeys. He had to be put down after being hit by a car. The donkeys are believed to have escaped from this field after a dog walker left this gate open. They then came through the gate and went on to the main road where Napoleon was struck by a car and fatally injured. The news of Napoleon's death has hit hard those who worked with him. That includes his best friend Caesar, who's still nursing a few cuts and bruises of his own. They've been together for the last six years. They haven't been separated um, since then. Um, so it's a bit of a shock to the system when your best friend doesn't come back anymore. But hopefully he's got the company of the other donkey. So hopefully in a couple of years' time they'll be best mates like him and Napoleon were. The Devil's Horseman stunt team, who put on Wild West and medieval horse shows, has been run by Gerard Napruce for the past 12 years. Napoleon's death has left a big hole in his act. He was a big part of the show. He was a big part of the farm to start. You know, he used to come around and knock on the door and uh, ask for food. And uh, He was a character. And, of course, he was a big uh, showman. He had his own act with his partner, Caesar, a bit like Laurel and Hardy. But we way to miss him because he used to keep everybody together. You know, he's, 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 and he's very sad, you know, he's like losing a good friend. And it seems no one will miss Napoleon more than his actual best friend. Hannah Pettifer, Anglia News, Mersley. Goodbye to Napoleon there. Right, uh, it is 14 minutes past six. You're watching Anglia tonight. Still to come on the programme, more on Anglia at 50. It was a programme that blazed a trail for wildlife filmmaking. We reveal some of the secrets of how survival was made. And there were some beautiful calm autumnal scenes across the region today, like here at Horning Sea in Cambridgeshire. Now, we can expect a similar day tomorrow, but make the most of it as things are turning much more unsettled over the weekend. Join me later to find out why.
Well, more news now, and a man's been charged over threats against a top racehorse trained in Newmarket. The man from Lancashire is alleged to have sent text messages and emails in a blackmail plot involving Conduit, the favourite for the prestigious Breeders' Cup. He's been charged with blackmail and bailed to appear in court in December. Essex County Council is looking to boost trade for local businesses by setting up an office in China. Yes, the council is spending £40,000 a year to set up shop at Nanjing in the Yangtze province. The aim is to put companies here in touch with buyers and suppliers there, as Lorna Ramsey now reports. We're all feeling the pinch of the economic downturn. So when the Essex County Council wanted to tap into business opportunities abroad, it knew exactly where to go. China. Lin Bo is an acupuncturist in Braintree. She was born and educated in China and is not surprised at the council's decision. As everybody knows, China is becoming the financial center of the whole world. And um, yeah, it, it's very exciting for me, though. £40,000 a year is being spent on setting up a base in Nanjing. But what do the people of Chelmsford think of the idea? Essex has been very forward thinking, so yes, I'm not entirely surprised. Nearly everything's Chinese. Don't need boosting. Good grief. (laughs) But all joking aside, there is a serious message here. The county council says its presence out in China could give a whole host of opportunities to businesses here in Essex. We're an entrepreneurial county and we we have great businesses and it proves that when we go out there, China wants to buy from us. And one such organisation to benefit is Colchester Hospital. Tan Aralampalem went to China on a visit organised by the county council last year. It resulted in training schemes for surgeons in both countries. The the trip was very, very productive. Um, We were able to make contacts with other surgical training uh, institutes and have invited um, uh, surgeons over from China. They're due to to travel over here uh, early in 2010. The County Council hopes many other businesses will follow in the surgeons' footsteps and benefit from one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News. Nurses from the Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital have been providing free health checks for World Stroke Day. They've been checking blood pressure as well as giving advice on diet and how to quit smoking. People have also been told how to recognise the signs of stroke, such as slurred speech, blurred vision or severe headaches. Our message is there's a lot you can do. You can check your blood pressure, eat a healthy lifestyle, stop smoking, exercise regularly, and all of those things will help reduce your risk of having a stroke. Now, the future of Ipswich's derelict Broomhill Lydell is back in the spotlight after the discovery of some footage of the pool back in its heyday. Yes, the Lydell's been closed to the public for seven years now, but film taken by a local family in 1947 and given to Anglia tonight shows exactly what we're missing. Tom Barton reports. Their memories of a different time, a time when summers were long and hot, and when Ipswich's Lido was a magnet for the town's youth. A time when the Broomhill Pool looked very different to how it does today. Now it's closed to the public, its gates padlocked. The pool last opened in the summer of 2002. In the time since, it has become faded and derelict. The rare footage was found in 82-year-old Edwin Mason's family archive. He has fond memories of the pool. Well, great fun, really. I mean, uh, there was a bunch of uh, us lads that used to go down there, uh, 12, 13, 14 years old. Um, We really used to have some fun down there. Um, we're diving off the boards, jumping off the side, um, swimming underwater. Alongside family days out, the film shows Olympic diver Betty Slade on a demonstration day. It's been released by the Broomhill Pool Trust, which is campaigning to have the Lido restored to its former glory. We believe there's a very, very strong case for, for reopening Broomhill Pool. We have a £67,000 feasibility study that says it's, it's viable, doable, feasible. And uh, we think the key issue at the moment is that uh, Ipswich Borough Council went out with an expression of interest advert to the main leisure journals, and we're hopeful that will attract a, a quality would-be operator for the pool. A decision about the pool's future will be taken in December. 
Edwin says that if it reopens in his lifetime, he'd happily be the first to dive in. Tom Barton, Anglia News, Ipswich. Wow. Hopefully not like that, though. <laughs>